Welcome to this lightning talk about optimizing marketing spend. Thank you for joining. Motivation. Half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. A famous quote from a 19th century retailer. It's even harder today. The scale and options have exploded and the privacy conscious consumers make it even harder. So what's the solution? Media mix modeling. It has been around for half a century um, and its goals are to quantify the benefits of your marketing activities and to reallocate the marketing spend to maximize your revenues. Your business might have a tool or a vendor that does this for you already but they are likely to be incentivized to actually inflate their usefulness. So you might still benefit from doing an analysis like this. Challenges. Insufficient data, because there is a data that we do not or cannot track. And there are also quantities which are impossible to observe. It's also under specified problem because many potential solutions that are consistent with your data can also have many different implications. Um, so for this implementation, we chose a less common way, which was instead of picking one plausible solution, um, we work with all of them within a Bayesian framework and weigh them up based on how likely they are. We can also reflect actual business decision-making criteria, such as switching cost or risk aversion through the application of Bayesian decision theory. Julia is perfect for such use case, thanks to its composability. For contrast, the best MMM package out there, Robin from Facebook research team, is a hybrid between R and Python, and it has a lot of tricky handovers between the two. This is only a brief talk. You can find all the details and more in the associated report. So let's jump into a practical example. Let's assume you are an owner of a local business using three marketing channels. The key questions are, what is the marketing contribution towards revenues and how to reallocate those marketing dollars across TV, search, and Facebook to maximize your revenues. To answer that, we effectively have to quantify the returns. They are often referred to as return on ad spend in marketing. And since we will be moving money around, we will need to work with a related concept, MROAS or marginal ROAS, which effectively captures ROAS of the next dollar you spend. The next thing is capturing the lagged effects, often called ad stock. Ignore the formula here. The decay rate defines the portion of the previous ad stock that you carry over to the next period. So if I invested $100 into an ad, decay rate of 0.3 means that next day I should still see effect worth $30. If I change that to, for example, 0.95, um, you can see that that $100 in the period one still has more than half of its effect felt late, uh, more than 10 weeks later. Next, let's talk about diminishing returns. It's often expressed via Hill curve, which is borrowed from biochemistry. But again, forget about the formula here. Let's look at the chart. Um, what this curve expresses is that the more money you spend, your marginal ROAS is effectively decreasing. Those are the uh, diminishing returns. And you can see that when we change the curve, we can accomplish a lot of different shapes of these curves. And also, you have probably noticed that 
some of these different parameters can actually lead to the same curves, which is what makes the fitting of these models so hard. So let's say we have fitted a model. Let's look at a one pager. One pagers are great for comprehensive decisions with all information in one place, but it's easier if I walk you through one by one. So first, the fitted curve is close to the actual revenues that we have seen. So hopefully we can trust this model. Um, our first question was, what was the revenue contribution of your marketing activities? So here you can, for example, see that the search ads have contributed to almost 10% of your revenues. And the same for all the other channels. You can do better. You can also quantify the ROAS of search, which here is almost 4x, which means for $1 spent on the search ads, you get $4 of revenues out. Uh, and lastly, the most important chart is the share of marketing spent versus the share of effect. In an optimal world, these two would be exactly the same. Whenever they're not, that means there is a big opportunity for our optimization procedure. So let's jump into that and optimize our budget. So again, let me walk you through this one pager. So on the first chart, you can see the proposed marketing budget allocation from the previous budget, which here for the search ads, was 26%, 27% of our dollars went into search. We are proposing that 40% should. And that is not surprising for you. If you remember from the previous page, search had a very high ROAS. We can also quantify all the benefits together and say that under the previous budget, the marketing contribution was roughly 22,000. With our optimized budget, we believe it could reach 25,000 on average. So that is an uplift of $3,000 just from changing our marketing mix. But thanks to the Bayesian framework, we can also quantify this uncertainty in the uplift. So these 3,000, we can actually display across all the various scenarios that we run. And here you can see that all 95% of simulated scenarios have an uplift bigger than zero, which effectively means that the optimized budget is better than the previous. In conclusion, we should start the experiment with the optimized budget. Thank you for listening. You can find more information in the associated repo, or you can just ask me. Thank you.